But it's not just suspected dirty cops. According to secret intelligence we've been briefed on, illicit drugs are being waved through by a huge network of corrupt insiders. Even Qantas has been unwittingly dragged into this criminal activity. A national intelligence operation codenamed Brunello has found that the Common Shero Bikey Gang and other crime groups have infiltrated our national airline. Dozens of Qantas employees have been linked to serious drug activity or organised crime. Is Qantas compromised? Greetings everybody, Maximus here. I hope you're all doing well wherever you may be all around this great big world of ours. I have an interesting video for you today. It's not often I come across a story involving a major global airline being infiltrated by organized crime and biker gangs, but it appears that Australia's flagship carrier Qantas finds itself in such a position. Real quick before we start, I'd like to thank subscriber Andy Hill for buying 5 coffees for the channel this week. His generous gift allowed me to get some new software that was used in the production of this video. So thank you Andy. And if you too would like to help support the channel, the links are in the description and of course, I will recognize you too just like Andy. Oh and stay tuned until the end, because I'm having a little merch giveaway announcement to tell you about. Top law enforcement agencies in Australia believe that the nation's flagship and largest air carrier, Qantas, has been infiltrated by some of Australia's most notorious organized crime and motorcycle gangs. Officials believe these gangs are using what is referred to as doors, or what we here in the US would commonly refer to as moles within the airline, to funnel various drugs and contraband including methamphetamine, cocaine and heroin. They have also been smuggling highly encrypted cell phones that are untraceable by authorities in order to coordinate the illegal shipments between Australia, Asia and Middle Eastern countries. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, a highly classified federal law enforcement intelligence operation codenamed Project Brunello has revealed that a significant number of Qantas employees of up to 150 or more have been criminally linked to the massive smuggling operation. The operation has revealed illegal activity that is quote, serious and represents a very high threat to Australian border security. Official sources who have seen the evidence against the unidentified Qantas employees but can't speak publicly due to the strict confidentiality of the operation said that some of the so-called doors or moles within Qantas Airlines specifically one in particular who is a member of the notorious Comanchero motorcycle gang is linked to the elusive drug cartel boss Hakan Aik, who authorities believe is the ringleader for the entire smuggling operation including masterminding the Qantas overseas smuggling pipeline. Aik, who has been on the run for more than a decade and has been able to elude authorities was recently tracked down in Turkey by the Sydney Morning Herald and 60 Minutes journalists to his hideout where he's been living a gangster's life of luxury at a hotel a few kilometers from Istanbul's historic district. Aik has been given the nickname of the Facebook Gangster because he is constantly promoting his flashy lifestyle on his many social media pages. The Sydney Morning Herald revealed that the Australian government believes the Comanchero gang affiliate is working as a mid-level manager at Qantas' Sydney airport and the intelligence suggests that he has recruited criminal employees at the airline to help him import narcotics from overseas. The recent revelation of the connection between Qantas and the elusive drug lord Aik raises serious questions for Qantas as well as the Australian government, especially after officials have been warning about serious gaps in coastal port and airport security in Australia. Qantas Group Security Chief Security Officer Luke Brahma told the Sydney Morning Herald and 60 Minutes that given we follow all of these government's vetting procedures, we find these claims to be disturbing. Currently, we have not been advised of any official ongoing investigations of Qantas Group or its employees involved in organized crime. 
If concerns are raised regarding any of our employees, we will actively support their investigation and take appropriate action. Brahma said that Qantas was the only commercial airline that holds a trusted trader accreditation with Australian Border Force which means every single employee connected to international air freight must pass a background security check. Brahma said thus far, we have not been notified by the Australian Border Force of any of our employees failing this test. However, the highly classified Project Brunello stated in its July 2020 report that so-called trusted insiders at Qantas have been found to have links to organized crime and were able to cause significant harm to Australia through their drug smuggling operation. The Sydney Morning Herald went on to say that the Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission inquiry had found that some Qantas staff were creating vulnerabilities in the security of supply chains and critical infrastructure that risked eroding the public's faith in border security and in the reputation of the airline. Some of the individuals mentioned were a Hells Angels linked figure in the Northern Territory who was working as a Qantas contractor. He is the subject of an investigation that revealed that he previously infiltrated Defense Department flights that were subcontracted to Qantas. Also identified was a Qantas freight contractor in Perth, who was also found under Project Brunello to have been repeatedly using his quote, trusted insider status to make large drug deliveries. The Herald reported that Project Brunello also claimed that former Qantas baggage handler turned wealthy Sydney surfer and horse racing owner Damien Flower, who pleaded guilty in May to importing $68.5 million worth of cocaine, had actually imported more than $1 billion worth of cocaine through Qantas. The investigation revealed that it also nabbed a corrupt Qantas baggage handler who has also since been jailed. The full extent of flowers trafficking through Qantas, along with Project Brunello's other findings, have never been previously publicly revealed until now. The top secret report also uncovered that the highest risk for criminal activity came from Qantas's air freight and ground and baggage crew divisions, among which 60 employees were linked to serious drug offenses or organized crime groups. According to the Herald, 23 Qantas employees have used employment at the airline to facilitate various criminal activities, including some crimes so vile that if I even mention the nature of these crimes on YouTube, it would result in my demonetization. Multiple sources with knowledge of Project Brunello's revelations say that they were based on many years of evidence acquired through employee records, investigations, phone taps, and human informants. The Sydney Morning Herald also points out that the reports of organized crimes infiltration into Qantas are in addition to revelations by Michael Phelan, the head of the Investigation Commission, that Australia's most infamous and wanted crime bosses have formed a cartel tell, raking in over $1.5 billion a year by smuggling drugs past Australia's border security. Nine men mostly made up of Australian biker gangs and Middle Eastern criminals make up what has been dubbed the Aussie cartel, with the cartel's key Comanchero biker gang member that has the most pull with the so-called Qantas trusted insiders. Project Brunello also singled out Qantas for their egregious gaps in business processes as well as lax drug testing, recruitment, and criminal history background checks. The report also strongly emphasizes that if Qantas would strengthen these security vetting procedures, they would create a formidable deterrent for future employees who may be tempted by an easy payday from the drug smuggling cartels. Crime Intelligence Head Mr. Phelan declined to officially confirm if Qantas had been indeed been infiltrated, but he said his agency works very closely with Qantas and that several private sector companies were vulnerable. Also, Qantas security chief Brahma said the airline had been strong supporters of introducing intelligence checks for all security credentials and was pleased the federal government was working to get this through parliament. In addition to the criminal checks that happen every two years, 
We'd like to see real-time background checks, which means airlines and airports know immediately if an employee has been convicted of an offense because it's another safeguard, he said. And we have had positive conversations with the government about this over a number of years. Well, that was quite an interesting look into Australia's criminal element, and Qantas especially. I'll be honest, I don't claim to know the inner workings of the Australian government, but the work done by the Sydney Morning Herald and 60 Minutes Australia paints quite a shady picture of some of the Qantas practices over the years. And if any of my subscribers down under can shed any further light on this unfolding story, please let me know in the comment section. Well, speaking of comments, all of you always come strong in the comment section. And even though I can't reply to all of them due to time constraints, I do read them. And many times I find that I learn things about a video I just told you about that I didn't know. I found that out from you. Of course, they aren't always flattering, but that's okay too. So I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be giving out a little free swag over the next four video releases. I usually try and release about one video a week on average. So I'm going to be selecting an outstanding comment over the next four videos, beginning with this one. And if your comment is selected, you will receive this special Maximus Aviation Mug, commemorating your outstanding achievement in being selected the best comment of that video. It's not about the most flattering or complimentary comment, however I always appreciate those but it will be what I consider to be the most insightful or revealing comment regarding the subject of that video. The only catch is you have to be a verified subscriber to be considered. However, to the guy that said I had the worst voice on YouTube, or that other guy and you know who you are who said I sounded like a constipated busted trombone. As the man on Seinfeld once said, no mug for you. No soup for you. I will also be selecting a random subscriber over the same period of time to receive this commemorative Maximus Aviation subscriber mug. Oh, and on a personal note, I'd like to give my son Gino a shout out for designing those very awesome mugs, as well as all the merch in the Maximus merchandise shops. So keep those comments and subscriptions coming, and you might just be one very lucky subscriber with a really cool mug. Of course, you could always shop at the Maximus Aviation merch shops anytime you want. The links are always in the description. Well, that's all I have for now. Now it's your turn to let me know down below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.